I think I was in the sixth grade. I usually rode my bike to school, but on this day I had been dropped off by my mom, so I had to take the city bus home. I had stayed to participate in some type of sports program, and it was getting late. I still had my stockings on under my dolphin shorts. I sat on the bench waiting for the bus when a man came and sat down beside me. We exchanged small talk, and it was pleasant enough that I did not feel threatened in any way. After a while, he asked me if I wanted a ride, and I said no. The bus soon came, and I was grateful as I wondered why he sat on the bus stop if he had a car. After boarding the bus, I noticed the man was driving behind the bus, and something told me this wasn't right. I was scared when I got off the bus, but I didn't see his car anymore. Everything that I was ever taught about strangers kicked in. It was starting to get dark, and I had a few blocks to walk, so I started walking in the street and not on the sidewalk remembering that people can grab you from behind shrubs. At least, I thought so. Then I saw his car approaching and I began to run. He passed me by and then came back, but this time I was hiding in someone's yard. He passed right by me and I ran for my life, down the street, across another street, and through a field. Probably not the best idea, but it was a shortcut. Finally, I made it home, went in the house, and never said a word about it to anyone. I was afraid of getting in trouble for coming home late. Later, I saw the same man on TV. I seen him before, was all I said as the newsman reported on the hillside strangler, Kenneth Bianchi. Nobody said a word, so I let it go. Now I think about it rarely, but I wonder if I was right, and if so, just how blessed I was. It's been six to seven years since my summer vacation where this happened. I won't name the place, but it was tropical and remote. In other words, a haven for my busy work life at the time. I had left my son with my ex-husband and joined three girlfriends, all looking for peace and quiet away from the rigors of home and family life for a few days. On our third night, I left my friends in the bar to take a late night stroll in the hotel grounds. Now, the hotel catered toward affluent clients, and its remote and visible security would reflect this. As I had no intention of leaving the grounds, I knew I would be safe, even if I was a lone woman sporting a large and very visible Breitling Chronomat watch on her left wrist. The assumption was my downfall. After a few minutes, I knew I was being followed. As I quickened my pace, my pursuer broke into a sprint to catch up with me. I tried to run, but he quickly caught up and roughly grabbed me by the arm. I managed to scream before he shoved a cloth over my face. I distinctly remember the smell of the liquid on the cloth and the thought that this was the end of my life. The drug was extremely potent, and I was knocked unconscious very quickly. Although I admit I may have simply just fainted in fear, the drug helped to render and keep me unconscious. Luckily, my scream was heard by a porter taking a smoke break and brought him toward where I was attacked. The remote spot where I was jumped was probably what saved me as my kidnapper had to carry me back toward the hotel. That was how the porter found us, my attacker carrying me out cold in his arms back toward the hotel and his getaway vehicle. My attacker actually tried to talk his way out of the situation but the unconscious tourist in his arms was the proverbial smoking gun. He dropped me and ran. I came to in the manager's office with my friends and a local doctor hovering over me. After a hospital checkup, I tried to enjoy the rest of the vacation, but I stayed close to the group and public places. It was the last day of school and the final bell had rung. I finally ran home, changed, and went out to meet my friends. We went to the park and climbed up on this really, really big tree. From atop the tree, you could see everything within a mile radius. We were discussing which house we were going to ding-dong ditch that day when my friend pointed out a house we'd never noticed before. It was relatively well hidden at the end of a dead-end lane. Since we were young and stupid, we decided to hit that house, even though there was no clear escape route and was rather shady looking. As we climbed down the tree, I can remember thinking to myself, we're going to get killed if we go to this house. We walked along the trail leading to the house and sat on the street discussing how we were going to do it. We decided that my buddy Jason was going to knock on the window and then hide on the side of the house, while me and my other friends, Simon and Austin, were going to knock on the door and run in separate directions. Then we would all meet at the park. As we started on our way to the driveway of the house, I kept thinking to myself, something isn't right. This place doesn't look safe. As we made it to the door, Austin counted to three, and we all knocked. The guy opened the door 
quick. He must have been sitting by the door or something, as there was no way he would have made it to the door that quickly. We were all caught off guard as it usually takes the homeowner over 15 seconds to open the door. Yet here we were, standing face to face with a large, crazed looking 30 something year old, less than three seconds after we knocked. Jason had made it to his hiding spot already. Simon darted through the bushes. Austin had ran to where Jason was hiding and I was forced to run up the street. Since I was the closest to him, he started chasing after me. I could have easily outrun him, but he threw something big at my right leg. I think it was a big rock or stone, but it hurt a hell of a lot more than a rock would, and started dragging me. I called out for my friends to come help me, but as we neared the driveway, I was certain none of them were going to come back for me. He had pulled me up the driveway and right up to the door when I heard a loud thud, and he let go of me. I turned my body and looked up to see him lying on the floor and Simon standing there with a steel bat he had found in the guy's shed in hand. I quickly got up and we bolted out of there. We made it back to the tree. My leg had stopped hurting and we all ran home. I told my parents what happened and they called the police. But when the police showed up to investigate, there was nothing in the house. To this day, I still don't know what might have happened to me had Simon not saved my ass. <laughs>